Hey everyone, welcome back to Data and Donuts. My name is Aaron. I'm here with my friend and colleague, Daisy from the RP Group. Today we're going to talk about data visualization, but before we get into our conversation today, I would like Daisy to maybe share a little bit about herself. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, yeah, my name is Daisy Segovia. I'm a senior researcher with the Research and Planning Group for California Community Colleges, also known as the RP Group. Um, and it's a nonprofit organization that does a lot of great work in research and planning, uh, working with uh, community colleges, et cetera, with the ultimate goal to just kind of help students be successful in their educational journeys. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much for that. So as we jump into data visualizations, what are data visualizations? It's a great question, Erin. I think kind of the very simple way to kind of define them, there are graphical representations of data and information. So we think of, you know, when we think of data visualization, you might think of like a chart, a bar graph, a scatter plot. Um, you know, if you are really into it, you might have some, you know, other more unique types of visualizations that you're into. But basically the whole point of a visualization is to very uh, efficiently and clearly demonstrate what the data are trying to tell us. Nice. You may have to use chat GPT for that. That was excellent. Great <laughs> job. <laughs> so looking at that, and, and you gave a lot of great examples, what are some of the strengths and limitations of using data visualizations, especially in the work that maybe that we do on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, and I think, you know, I've been in research and uh, an analyst for like 18 years now, so a long time. And there's a lot of training that kind of goes into how you analyze data, how you read the data, how you can kind of make sense of what the, the data are trying to tell us. And what I really like about using data visualizations is that it can be a, a really easy way to help people wrap their mind, their head around what story that data is trying to tell us. So, and this is also a kind of a, a great way to share it with others who might not have, you know, 18 years of training um, in their back pocket. So they can really help us communicate what that story is that is supported by that data. And it's really, I think, a great way to make the data more engaging and easily digestible by a lot of different type of readers. So you're saying that we probably shouldn't give people like hundreds of pages of spreadsheets and raw data, no? I mean, I'm sure there's somebody out there that like really just loves reading tables of numbers and numbers. But, you know, with the data visualizations, I think one thing things that I've found is that you can really, like I said before, engage the person. So you kind of can skip that whole step of like try and analyze it, try and to figure out what it's telling you and then you can move on to kind of like those more actionable items so it's a really great way to just kind of like put it out there dry it up and say this is what it's telling us um, and you can use it for reporting you can use it to illustrate different kind of concepts to reinforce arguments to show trends to highlight maybe like an outlier that's really you know out there and when you when you see it you see it you know so it's just like a quicker way to get that data story out there. Excellent. No, I completely agree. And I think thinking about that and knowing how we engage a variety of audiences with our data stories, or with our mm -hmm. visualizations, what considerations would you suggest we have when doing so? Yeah, so I think one of the maybe tricky things about d data visualizations is that it is a skill that you need to develop. And there's different things you need to you know, keep in mind when you're coming up with, well, what's the best fit visualization that I want to choose for this specific type of data? You know, really think about what is the purpose of your visualization. Are you trying to demonstrate something that's conceptual? Are you trying to demonstrate that's very, something that's like very data driven and you really need those little uh, individual data points to, you know, um, be your star of your stories? Or are you trying to declare something like here, here's what the story is saying, this is what it is. Or is it more of an exploration? Like we're not sure yet, Here's a way to kind of visualize it and say, like, let's start exploring what this data might be telling us. So really what you choose for your data visualization is really going to depend a lot on what the purpose of what you're trying to convey. Um, you should also consider, you know, 
who your audience is. If you're, you know, say showing these to a bunch of technical people that have that background, maybe that is requires a different type of chart or or you know line graph, etc. If you're, you know, in our type of work, it could be a student, it could be an administrator, it could be a manager, it could be someone who is in charge of, you know, deciding what our policies are going to be. So making sure that the visualization that you choose is really, you know, geared toward that audience is going to be very, very important. Um, uh, you know, should also consider what that audience needs to know. So are you trying to increase the, their knowledge on certain something? Are you trying to get them to uh, dive into some sort of action and do something with it? You know, depending on like what you want your audience to do with that data is, is, is really going to be helpful if you choose the right visualization for that. Um, and then the mode of presentation, especially nowadays where, you know, even a few years ago, everything most of the time was in person and something that you might choose to display to someone either, you know, uh, printed out on paper or on a PowerPoint slide in person, um, you know, would you would have to take different two considerations about like what's the best way to view that. But now we have in virtual, uh, you know, modes of communication with others and I've learned what worked in person doesn't necessarily always translate that well in virtual environment as well. Or if it's just going to be written and you're not going to be there to help explain that to someone, you know, you might have to take different things into consideration about like what type you use or what elements you put into it to make sure that that story is, you know, uh, accurately being uh, read by the person. Because as someone who is an analyst, as someone who is a data visualizer, my role in it is to make sure that I'm properly encoding that information and data so that it can be successfully decoded by the reader. And that's ultimately what you're trying to do with your data visualizations. It's almost like a translator in, in a way, but I like how you talked mm -hmm. about the different approaches where we can go about, is this the objective? Is the analysis the objective? Is it leading everybody to a certain point in time or the star of your data is what you're really kind of saying. I think that's kind of the key element is really defining what that purpose is. So I think that's super helpful, like really mm -hmm. helpful when trying to start that out, you know, in really thinking about the framework, like how easy is it to consume? Like, are you going to give the entire student information system on one dashboard? Probably not the best, but right. sometimes it could be. And so, or 4,000 filters, is that helpful? Perhaps for like one or two or a thousand people? We don't know. And I think that's really getting to know your audience and really understanding your purpose is, is essential and things to consider. Mm -hmm. So and, now that yeah. we, go ahead, please go ahead. I was gonna say like, I think one of the things is that, you know, I had more of like academic type of training in kind of my past. And as I've been exploring more data visualizations, you know, I've tried to kind of, break those habits that I was so taught, you know, so ingrained in me of like, you only use this type of graph, you only use this way, you format it in this specific type of thing. And I think part of what makes this really fun is that it is kind of almost like an art, right? So you can kind of play with it a little more, be really considerate of your audience and their skill level and their kind of data literacy as well. So you can have some fun with it and really engage people with that data and making sure that they get what they need uh, from what you're trying to, uh, you know, tell them. That's awesome. So now it's on to my final question. Now that you have 18 years of experience, all kinds of data visualization skills and considerations that we should follow. What's your favorite data visualization and why? Sure. And, and, and I think, um, I don't know if this is like a common answer or not, but one of the things that really got me into data visualizations and thinking about different ways of visualizing data besides just like the typical line graphs and the typical bar graphs is when I saw uh, Florence Nightingale's rose chart. Um, and Florence Nightingale was a, a woman who was a statistician back in like the late 1800s. She was a nurse during the Crimean War. Um, and she was really, and she is known as one of like the pioneers of like visual representation of information and statistical graphs and things like that. And with this rose chart that she made, she created this diagram of the different, of the causes of mortality um, that, you know, the soldiers were dying of in the army. 
and it, when you take a look at it you know it looks like a flower it looks like a rose so maybe i'm also kind of you know attracted to that because my name is daisy and i'm a flower uh but i just feel like it is like a very successful uh data visualization because you get the point of what she was trying to say and what she was trying to show and she, it kind of is like the tw the the 12 months of the year january through december in the circle and it has like the spikes that come out if they have more mortalities during a certain month and you can really see the pattern of like more deaths were occurring during these these turbulent certain type of months and she also kind of encoded different types of like deaths and etc so you could also see which kind of deaths were like the the ones that were the more in that war and so i was just like oh this was so cool one because she was a woman back in the day when there weren't as many women doing statistical stuff like this um she it was like new different type of graph that you're not used to seeing that she created by the way before there were computers so all this data hand hand computed uh the graph she drew it herself you know type of thing and it was just like oh i just know what she was trying to say and she was able to really make a lot of difference in these wars because of her skills uh and her uh, and her artistic skills as well so i would say that is my definitely my favorite data visualization and i actually do have it framed and it's like up in my living room right now because uh, that's how nerdy i am but yeah i think that was like the thing that really got me started down uh, learning more about data visualizations. I think that's awesome. That's even cooler that you have that because I know in some of my visualization classes, that's one of the first things that I draw everyone's attention to. But I think that's awesome, especially with that story and really giving how meticulous she was in her work, not just hand coding everything, but then not just using the scientific approach, the, the mathematics, the uh, quantitative reasoning and, and calculation, but then taking it and thinking outside the box and being really creative to say, how can I share this in a way that's easily consumable as mm -hmm. opposed to giving someone like a 500 page report. And I think right. that was really the start or the shift of what are we doing with data visualization? I will probably post that as a link to that in there. So everyone who's watching can actually see that. So thank you yeah, for sharing that. Happen. So, Thank you so much again for hanging out today, for sharing your experience and your perspective on data visualization. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Great. Thank you, Arian, so much for having me. Have a good one.